Hello guys and welcome back to another M Trader tutorial. Today we're going to be updating the Trader tutorial that I worked on a long time ago. So this one I've basically updated it so it works with newer versions. There's just been a few little bit of tweaks uh, that I did. Um, I added support for dynamic uh, account sizes so I can in the tutorial it, like the procedures and stuff it now ex uh, basically shows uh, how to make the trades dynamic if we right click on him you can see these ones are static they're at a specific number a certain range and then we can see that last one is basically a dynamic range where it can range anywhere between um, one item to 64 items so that's dynamic and there's a few other things you might notice you can't actually pull out the um, item from the stack so it's actually displaying as the items in the thing but you can't take it like I'm clicking on it and won't pick it up so I've added actually three slots for those trades so again all these are non uh, clickable uh, trade slots but if we grab uh, some emeralds so we'll grab some of these and then we'll place some in here and now we can basically take them, but we can't take the extra ones. So we'll do that for each one of these. So as you can see, we can take that. We'll go to the other one. We'll grab this one. And again, we can't pull out the rest. So these ones, the buttons basically allow you to cycle between pages. Very straightforward stuff. And right clicking on the entity will actually open up a GUI for the player. Uh, it's not bound to the actual entity. Uh, the entity is just basically passing variables to the player so it can be read when the GUI is open. And then it basically allows you to um, know what trades to present to the player. So that's all run on procedure side, which is why this system works. So let's go into Amcrater and I'll show you the uh, how the actual system works, where the files all link to, and then I will also explain the changes and stuff like that in detail. All right, so another thing that I've basically done is I've organized the workspace a little bit. So there is the GUI and entity in the main folder now, and then we have one called procedures, and then there's entity trader, and then your procedure for basically when the internal spawn for the entity is in here, as well as when the player right clicks on the actual trader entity. So this one's a little bit different. This is, um, a global procedure as you can see player right clicks on entity and we're basically grabbing the variables that we set uh, for the internal spawn for the actual entity so basically the trade count is basically pulled from the entity itself so because this is a support source entity we can actually get the ver mbt variables from the entity that we're right clicking on which are these ones right here and then we're basically passing them on to these variables for the player, which are MBT for the player. So we're also doing that for the trade item. And as you can see, these are all the trade items for the uh, trader entity. And these are being applied to the player. And then what we're doing is we're basically setting the trader page. So it is on page one. And after, what we're doing is we're making sure that the um, GUI that we want to open is open. So we're just basically running it for the source entity, and then we're going to open up the GUI. Uh, the other thing that we're doing within this condition, uh, this procedure, is we're testing if the entity itself, which is the event slash target entity, is the lumberjack. So we're not running it for every entity that we're right clicking on. That's the only thing that we're basically doing in this particular procedure. So the internal spawn, again, for the entity happens to do with the, um, when the entity first spawns in the world, it's basically going to run this script. So no matter if it's spawned in by egg or if it's spawned in uh, through natural generation where it will spawn naturally, uh, this procedure is going to basically run. Now this holds the trades which is bound to the entity. Now again, like I said before, it will basically have, the entities will have a set amount of uh, variables that will be passed over to the player and then it will be read by the GUI. So this is basically how the procedures are basically set, uh, setting the thing. Now you can basically set whatever trades you want. Uh, if you're if you don't want them random, then you can basically just set um, these like that and remove the random parts, and then you can basically um, 
just run it as a normal uh, item. So because there's only trade items for, I think we're doing it for each one. So this is the trade number, right? So what this is doing is if you want to adapt the trade number, because this is going to update the variable type, the variable name here. Now, because it's updating the trade variable name, it's actually trade item and then the count number. Now, if we were to go back over to our other procedure, you can see that it says trade count and then our number is right, right here. This is one, two, and three. Now the repeater is running three times, so it's going to basically determine the count of the um, trade for each one of these. Now the, the difference with that is if you want it to be very specific, then what you want to do is you want to just remove that, and then you want to just remove this and add trade one and then trade two and trade three and then assign the number that you want there. But because we're not doing that, what I'm going to do is just basically have it uh, set up the way that it was. So I'm just gonna delete these ones because I'm not sure how that was all set up. It's, it was from an older tutorial, so I'm not sure. But uh, we're just gonna leave it like that and that should be fine. And what it's doing is it's basically assigning a number for the item. Now there's, six different types of um, logs and planks that we're basically generating as well as saplings. So this is how we're basically generating the type that we're going to be generating. I think one is for oak, two is for spruce, birch, um, what was the other one? Jungle, acacia, and dark oak. So depending on the number, it's basically going to uh, assign a certain type of log. Uh, the sapling and a certain type of planks for that. Now the other script down here, this part right here from this um, uh, is not running on server side. It's uh, doing another random number. This is basically saying, hey, we need another random number. Let's get it. And then what it's going to do is it's going to actually determine the random number. And then inside that, we're going to basically assign a different uh, value for the um, trades. Now, again, this is running for each particular item. So what we're doing here is it's going to have a chance of uh, from, I think, 50% chance to have a static number from two and four uh, for the count. And then the other two ones here are uh, random uh, it's another 50% for it to be a random number. So this is where this part comes in. I've taken this value right here and I've rounded it up. And the reason why we're rounding it up is because if it is um, lower than a um, lower than like 0 0.1 or whatever, it's going to automatically round down and this could actually give zero items. So you don't want that. So you want to round up. And if it is a lower number than zero point something or other where it would round on, it's going to basically say, okay, let's round up to one instead of zero. So that's why we're rounding up. And then what we're doing is we're basically going to get the random amount. We have already set the random amount to a random number. And then we're going to multiply that by 64. Now what, multiplying that by 64, it basically says, okay, this random number between zero and uh, one can be a random number. And then we're gonna be basically multiplying that by 64. So if it was something like 0 0.5, then that would be something like 32, if anything. So it'd be somewhere around 32 if we're multiplying it by 64. So that's basically how that works. Um, it's basically just going to take the random number, multiply it by 64, and then you're going to get a random number between one and 64. And then we're doing it again for the other uh, one, which is equal to or greater than zero. Now you might notice that we're starting with the higher number, 4%. It's testing if it's uh, the random number is equal to or equal to or greater than 0 0.75. Now this is basically saying, okay, is it equal that to or greater than 75? If true, run this one. If it's equal to or greater than 0 0.5, then it's running this one. Now the reason why I'm actually decreasing the, um, 
the number for the thing is rather than having to test for if it is um, two conditions, if it's equal to or less than, you can actually just test if it's um, a certain range above and then work your way down because you've already tested for this one uh, between 0 0.75 and 1. So you know that it's not in this particular order because we're using if else statements. So the next one would be basically already testing if it's equal to or um, greater than uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.75, even though that we're testing um, for higher than that, we've already know that it won't run higher than that. So it's somewhere between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. And then we're just doing that for each one. So that's all that's going on here. And then lastly, what we're doing is we're basically just uh, creating the trade number and we're increasing that value by one, which it repeats three times. And then we've basically getting the trade number right here, or pardon me, right here. So that's basically what we're doing in that procedure. Hopefully that makes sense on how it works. It's basically just basically assigning the um, variables to the entity so it can be brought in by the procedures later on. All right, so let's go over to the other ones. Now, I'm covering all these different procedures first so we can actually go into the entity and I'll cover how the uh, to set it up in the uh, GUI and in the entity itself. So let's cover the buttons. They're pretty straightforward. What we're doing is we're going to, this is the uh, next button. So we're already testing if it's on page one. Uh, again, this is if for the player side. So we want to test if it's on page one. If it's equal to one, then we want to set it to two. If it's equal to two, then we want to set it to three because it's counting up towards the pages. Now we only have three pages for our trades. If you want more, then you have to increase the number and keep this pattern going. Uh, for the other one, which is our previous page, what we're doing is we're testing if it's page three. If it is, then we're setting it to page two. If it's page two, then we're setting it to page one. And then what we're doing is under this one, when um, remove item when item traded. So basically what we're doing here is we're just basically removing the item from the inventory slot. Now this is a slot procedure. It's under this block right here under slot GUI procedure, slot and GUI procedures. And you can just remove uh, the slot zero, which is where I have the emer emerald slot set up. And basically this what what this will do is it will remove the emerald from that particular slot so it can't be um, duped over and over again. So you're basically consuming the emerald each time a trade is made. Uh, for the set page trades, now this basically happens each time the um, page updates. So we're basically going to determine all the different trades and get the values for those trades. Now, again, if we were to go back over to our entity trader and then our internal spawn, all these variables are already preset to what we need for our values. So again, one, two, three, four through six is irrelevant to the one, two, three, four through six. So these are these particular ones. Now it's under the player trader item different variable on the player side now because it's basically we passed it over to the player. Um, now basically what we're doing is we're basically going to get the count, assign the count to it, and then we're going to determine what item that we want to basically trade and what slot we want. Now there is a couple different conditions with this particular thing. Uh, the changes that I've made is uh, basically testing if the player is on page one and if the item, if get number of items in slot zero. So slot zero is always our emerald slot. So we're basically testing if there's zero items in slot zero, if that's true, then what we're going to do is we're gonna use, we're gonna apply the um, same items as down in this part right here in slot two rather than slot one. We're actually clearing slot one which is determined down here. So it doesn't allow people to pull out items through slot one. So again, if we're switching it over and there is an emerald in that particular slot, then what we're going to do is we're going to clear slot two, which is our slot where we can't pull things out of. And then we're going to basically assign the, the same items in slot one, which people can make a trade out of. 
and then we're doing that for the saplings as well again the numbers vary depending on the type of items that we're determining uh, if you were to add a certain number then you would want to um, like a static page and you would just need to assign the thing to a specific page I might do a separate tutorial in the future on static trades to kind of expand that because I get that quite a bit in requests for certain things and I think it would be pretty handy to actually do a tutorial on all right and then we have our again our ones that they can trade and then the ones that are just for display and then our last trade cycle is our planks uh, this one is again the ones that we can't trade with and then these are the ones that we can trade with so this is the set uh, page trades so that's um, very important and if we go back to our GUI set page trades and then that's all that all the procedures there are uh, let's go back to the main folder and then I'll show you the procedures for the entity so if we go to triggers and then you can see the internal spawn is this procedure right here this is the one that we're basically assigning the trades automatically to that entity when they are um, when they are brought into the world so this is that procedure which is linked to no other procedures are linked to the entity so it's only that internal uh, entity spawn um, procedure itself the other one is the buttons the buttons are linked to the uh, on button right clicked and then we're basically doing next running the next um, button procedure and the other one is for the previous button procedure uh, we have two three slots actually so slot zero is for our emeralds we're eliminating the stack to emeralds it's specifically so we don't need to test for the items in the script now if you wanted to test for the items in the script and have it dynamic then you would have to kind of tweak the code a little bit um, we're also uh, saying drop items when GUI is not bound to an external entity so this is very important so the the emeralds don't get consumed when the inventory is closed without uh, the, the player taking the emeralds out of the inventory so make sure that part's uh, checked uh, another thing yeah, that you might notice is the when slot condition or contents change we've basically set uh, page trades so this is basically the procedure set page trades that one that we um, covered uh, I'll just bring that up again GUI set page trades this is the one that's basically running here so we want that one all right, so the other thing that we're doing is in slot one, uh, we have when item taken from slot and when transferred slot through shift click. This is our slot for basically trading. So we want to basically uh, consume the item with that one. So this is where the consume script comes in. Um, I'll just close out of that and then we'll go back over here and we're going to remove the item from slot one or pardon me slot zero so this is basically consuming the emerald from slot zero and then we have our slot two I don't think there is any procedure in here but we want to disable player interaction with this particular slot and for the other one uh, you notice that we're not dropping the items from the when they're when the GUI is closed so it is going to just remove the items from existence it won't drop them onto the ground and give them back to the player naturally if this hap if this is checked it's going to basically uh, dupe items and people will be able to get the items uh, infinite amount without making trades so make sure these both are unchecked uh, for the slot two you want to uncheck this one as well and then you want to check the disable player interaction this basically prevents players from just grabbing the items without making a trade so that's basically that's the important part and um, yeah that's basically all there is oh no one last thing the last thing that we're doing is when this GUI is open ticked what we're doing is we're basically running this particular procedure again just to make sure that all the um, items and stuff are linked properly and the right trades are basically running as or set up as they're properly displaying so basically what that will do is it'll basically every tick it's going to run that procedure to make sure that the trades are properly set up 
So again, if you need to actually expand that, you just click on the uh, click to expand and then you want to basically select your procedure in here. So that's all there is to it. Um, hopefully that is clear enough on how it works. Again, I will provide the workspace, the um, procedures and the resources for the actual trade entity on GitHub. So you guys can basically download the procedures and stuff and use it in your own script and mods and stuff like that. So hopefully you get found today's tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.